So right there, it was my fault. But then on top of that, I had also never before arrived at the casino on foot, nor thusly carrying my book bag upon my back. Rather than jungle, juggle a bunch of items about me while once amidst a public place, instead I always just keep my book bag about me, as daily function, as daily function demands many trinkets and travel, and several things conveniently close at hand. And because I'm a feminist, and because I'm a feminist, and because the purse as a concept is versatile between genders and constrictive to women, as we all bear baggage. I would just normally leave my book bag in the car and keep on my person only what context requires. Wherefore, naturally, I hadn't anticipated that my bag would be screened, let alone rifled through, or that I would be subjecting myself needlessly unto search and seizure, or that so hardly I'd even be forfeiting but utterly relinquishing my civil liberties, and, or that my personal property, all of it harmless and non-metallic, was liable to be confiscated merely for showing up. If I had been aware at the time that there, e there existed even the hypothetical possibility that legal gamble loomed as above the air within touch of the turnstile, if the pending potential had even occurred to me, I probably would have waited elsewhere. I hadn't remembered that I was even wearing the thing. While I was still on the train, I had retrieved my driver's license from the slip from the slim zip compartment of its front face to save myself search on the spot and s slipped said ID, which wears the date today, <clears throat> along the sur surface of the currency that was also in my front pocket, but specifically to avoid even opening my book bag. And I suppose it didn't help much either, and admittedly to this my incredibly asinine, impeccable, imbecile, all too becoming of myself, and so effortlessly impromptu, yet poignantly portrayed of me in moments like these. Its attire, the book bags, could only against my aloof unaware, for as much that, except for my spirit bag, which plastic baggy contained a quarter ounce of Mary's green charm, the entire volume of the book bag's cargo space was empty, just a rolled up plastic sandwich pouch not even a Ziploc, at the bottom of an otherwise conspicuously vacant book bag. So, I mean, except that I'm there to lack that sack soon, too, and sell my only cargo to someone I'm there to meet. You know, what are they going to think? But very stupidity, like bullshit should stink. Except but that it was cold to the throbbing knuckles that night, and the hat and hoodie and gloves, grubby with tire shine, which but for what if something otherwise legitimized my luggage, they were no longer within my bag, but hugging my head, my upper half, and my hurting hands, and somehow holding my heat just above hypothermic. I were, and except that they were, I were else bereft of bitching. Everything else, house key, phone, cards, lighter, chillum, they were all in the more accessible zip pocket, on the front face on the front of the bag out of which I had earlier removed the driver's license but still it's a casino for luck's sake a den of excess and vice and sad lonely misery so long as I'm not holding arms or explosives or a brick of cocaine what the fuck should it matter to them at the most I had thought once she asked to look at my bag and after a short hesitation suddenly cognizant of the risk I, that I might have been taking yet having nonetheless already handed my ID to her enormous lug of a partner, another NAFTA import that nobody ordered, yet found a cross where water bordered. <clears throat> if she didn't just as quickly pass me along, I would simply be denied admission. That the authorities would be summoned left me both dumbfounded and furious when once it became clear that she intended, in fact, to do just that. To be honest, though, and attesting again, to my own ignorant dumb fuck, which should have otherwise only assumed, with so much cash on hand, the obvious reality of the situation, that law enforcement occupies its own office and a continual presence on the premises. In lieu of which absence, conversely, I doubt they should have called the police and requested a squad car over it, but I acknowledge my fault. <clears throat> she was a short, spherical Hispanic woman, 
the morbidly obese, unfuckable tub of shit that initiated and would not be at all dissuaded from, nor ever once considered against, my robbery that night. <clears throat> Perfect doppelganger to that crass, round ball of pure walking excrement. Sally from the inn. The other end of this... Those two comprising the other end of the same regrettable breed subclass, which is always and only hateful, as per the behavioral taxonomy of the animal, well documented of its subset, distinct from the primary, primary, pleasant specimen of the Latina dichotomy. But regarding the woman of the casino, I'll seethe no more on fat, and say no more beyond except than that, while she was under no obligation to feign dismay, or even pretend to be at quandary over the issue, or in the least divided with personal dilemma, she certainly didn't have to portray such jubilant display at my consternation, nor most assuredly needed she make jests with my distress and agitate me further. <clears throat> I pointed out that she didn't need to involve the cops, to which she joked with me sarcastically. But, but marijuana is illegal. Like to not summon the cops? Yeah, right, that'd be silly. The hideous pig. I thought for an instant to swipe my book bag out of the hog's hands and make mad dash toward the door, and would have too, if I wasn't otherwise positive that they'd subsequently charge me with assault for it, though it were only my property that I would snatch back. For that my license and the whereabouts to my easy apprehension thereafter was firmly between the fingers of her heavy, lumbering, laborious breath of a partner which primitive clumsy digits, I'm sure, <clears throat> make it difficult for the creature to operate button-fly pants and impossible to master. But as per earlier dissertation, some breeds are just hostile by trait and dangerous within distance, though dog, as distinct from feral canine, is domesticated. And some of these southern species of sapien, specifically the spherical and shrek-like, are simply subhuman, lacking the capacity capacity to comprehend the most basic emotions, and go, seek out, try to find example against my ensample, search, and disprove the stereotype of my prejudicial theorem. <clears throat> I think you'll sooner find one that should rather, rather than fall, float her fat ass off a cliff and invalidate gravity. Notwithstanding, though, while the preceding casino unpleasantness did not, did not transpire within the recent ugliness of these last three or four months, which spanned to Dem demands another scrutiny entirely, <clears throat> like the strange episodes of the Goodwill store. It still occurred within the time frame of my residency at my aunt's home, and for now, reminiscing on my stone roll, I'm trying to devote my retrieval and focus my analysis to any and ev every relevant memory prior to this ongoing period. I'm tracing my personal history as far back as I can. <clears throat> as I have more and more frequently this, these past several weeks. For any instances or experiences or interactions of a more intimate quality between the, the binary of this particular race dynamic, his Spaniard and me, which exclusive, exclusive condition excludes, of course, engagements of peripheral public junction with a cashier or a server or a teller at the bank, what have you, which socialization presumes under sterile pretense. <clears throat> but it said for those incidents unique to my encounter and inclusive of any uh, inclusive of any characterization, aside from popular media portrayal, as I should only then assume them all for violent drug lords and via news venue unto that same uh, effect, but with performers clothed in much poorer costumes, but character of such nature as might generally be considered impactful or formative upon one's individual impression, insomuch that if I watch a YouTube clip of an oven his Spaniard calling whites trash, it's anonymous, indistinct to me, and irrelevant. <clears throat> Yet if that same YouTuber should say it to me directly as I pass him on the street that I'm white trash, which hardly needs be said, suddenly it's become personal and is liable to affect opinion and schema. I'm thinking, though, and I'm thinking, but as far as I've managed to recall, I'm thinking, though, and I'm thinking, but as far as I've managed to recall, 
as to anything before this current Yorkville, is optics within the employee parking lot of the distribution center. Such comprised the great majority of my total prior association, and less than association, but instead merely a more familiar proximity with the Spaniards at all. For earlier than 16 months ago, <clears throat> roughly, I simply had not much history with the Spaniards in my humble little hermit life theretofore. My little brother, or younger younger brother, more, accurate, more accurately put, as he is quite the fat fuck, for a long time he used to work second shift at the D.C., the distribution center. And throughout all but the last few months that I was on probation, prior to that I completed my nine months in prison, <clears throat> <clears throat> because my because that my brother during the same interval had a suspended license that he could not drive himself a second DUI conviction I was paid by, by my younger brother $150 a month to both drop off and pick up from work pick him up from work in his car 3 times a week <clears throat> It was often the case though as I would wait for him to emerge at the end of his shift that the other departments would shuffle out and pass directly before me in my brother's car on the other side of a chain link fence onto a little intake security office shack to pass through a metal detector to then pass within my near vicinity again after exiting the shack as they'd proceed beyond and onto the parking lot behind me as I would routinely park in the empty handicap spots because I'm an asshole nearest to the intake shack, the car still running but that I might quickly zoom over and scoop up my brother immediately upon his exit. Over the ensuing weeks and months and seasons, though, and for stretches of varying length, an optic rapport would come to materialize between me and certain of the pretty Latinas, which lacked but context to break the ice. Oh, uh, right. <clears throat> and also that I was an unemployed felon, uh, as I still am, but living at my mother's house, passing catatonic through probation limbo, during which I waited three years just to go to prison, uh, and all over a pound of flowers, all while shepherd to a flock of six dogs, six circus bears, with whom I spent no less, with who I spent no less than 21 hours a day, three days a week, and 24 hours the other four. Such circumstance, as it turns out, uh, amounts to quite the proficient context preventer and revoker of charisma. That for ye consecutive years, consecutive, I couldn't have been less appealing to a potential girlfriend uh, if I was the face of a public campaign to reinstate a man's matrimonial right to abide by and humble his wife via his happy rule of thumb. <clears throat> I'd make eyes, though, with some of the chicas, among a pair or a trio of amigas, and their wandering, and their wandering past outside in the intake shack, outside the intake shack, with the culmination of each newly ended shift thereafter, would encroach, encroach, encroach closer and closer to my brother's car I drove. It would encroach closer and closer to my brother's car I drove. That is, until the Chicos would catch on, or until one of the Amigas would become <clears throat> jealous of her Amiga, or envious of the intrigue that me and her Amiga, Amiga might share, and so would make the men to know or as might be inferred by the chicas, they're later walking separate and no longer amigas together. Over the ensuing shifts, once our interest was ever sufficiently suppressed and at rest, either way, and regardless of how the chicos were aware, but after that aware they were, suddenly they'd be careful to send a chico or two to escort the chicas toward their vehicles beyond me and my brother's car at any rate, lest spontaneous conversation should develop between one, she and I between one, she and I, with too many chances. That was all just animalistic behavior, though. Primates protecting mates within territory from being poached by an outsider. I can understand that. <clears throat> I can understand that. And I never took offense to the glares of the Chicos for the glances that I shared... the glares of the Chicos for the glances that I shared with the Chicas. I just tried to make my ogling not so obvious. Then there was Sovereign Marble the other employment shithole that I associate with Sinister Samanok. Though I'm pretty sure the official residency of the Busy Bee belongs to the near neighboring village of South Adjacent Sheridan. <clears throat> for, the 
for as much that for, for as much that these two locales both at which two I've been now formerly employed as of two days ago are just within short minutes of my childhood home. I worked at Sovereign Marvel for less than a month after being released from prison and while still on parole some 14 months prior that I shall have in Yorkville began my abode. <clears throat> Along with the aforementioned distribution center these two, Sovereign Marvel and the Busy Bee they comprise three of the four quadrants of hell, which places of despairing spiritual suicide await the daily death of local adolescents who delay too long their industrious notion, and other less academically inclined dreg bobcats of blue but fool's gold. The fourth of these is a plastic molding company. It's the only purgator purgatory of the four with which I'm not formally acquainted. I interviewed there once, though, Let's just say that the atmosphere was, to me, foreign. And pervasive to its character, I denote, denoted something distinctly alien. That, or maybe I just felt extraterrestrial for the almost homogeneous, homogeneous Hispanic heritage of my prospective co-workers. And for the fact that the company was, conspicuously, controlled by the, emigra the emigrated economic cartels that are common to this region, and which wield monopoly over menial employment. Like the DC, the Plastics Molding Company is lo located in Plano, two towns east of Samanac, where home once was, and the next over west of Yorkville, where that now I'm at. Well, where that now I take refuge at, as here I muse while still I cruise. Its parent office is located in the city from which the company took its name, in the Plano of that great Texas Lone Star, that undaunted independence, that fearless frontier whose long contention now numbers but two flags, one from whence once was one from once was one from whence once was six. And does prophecy not promise, and scripture not say that they would find way between Egypt and Assyria? Out here, though, around the soil of Illinois, Plano and Samanach sandwich sandwich. And perhaps you've heard how that they're fixing to wedge another little town in between Sandwich and Plano. Yeah, they're going to call it bologna. That way, people passing through can enjoy a plain old bologna sandwich. Get it? Told you I can be a real cut up. I can't quite l claim that c comedy, however. That's a little slice of local silly. <clears throat> Back to Sovereign Marble, though. Which company, ironically, produces synthetic plaster countertops and hardly wields authority within the industry. Something seems amiss 